Hello everybody, Fluorescent Zebra here, back in the uh, lovely bee tutorial world to talk a little bit about genetics. Now, we went over it in the last video, but I wanted to touch on the idea of genetic decay again. And remember with the bees that there are uh, two kinds when you're breaking hives. You have pristine bees, which don't suffer genetic decay, and then you have your ignobles. Now your ignobles are going to decay and uh, about a hundred generations that random number kicks in so they'll start to have that chance that when a new generation is born there will not be a princess. So just be aware of that if you're using ignoble bees. That is a very large possibility at some point that you'll come back to the hive and there just won't be a bee there. So now to get started on the idea of genetics let's talk a little bit about breeding bees. That's kind of the idea. So I do have some hives set up over here. You see over here. And uh, I've got a few bees in them. Now the most common thing that you're going to do with bees is straight breeding, which is breeding the exact same genetic markers together. And you can see all of these drones stack. That's because all 13 of their traits are exactly the same. And that's the same over here with this forest princess. These guys are all exactly the same genetically. Ta-da. Now if we were to go in and we were to grab, let's grab a forest. And while we're in here, we'll grab a meadow bee. Just get rid of the flower. We'll go over here. Oh, I did have some in here. Awesome. Good job, me. We have some forest, and you'll notice that these guys are stacking, but we do have some forest drones as well as some meadows drones, because we've read it, of course, with a forest and a meadow. Give me off. There we go. The bees that we breed out of this are going to have a few different genetic markers. Same as if we do these, if we do a second set over here. When they come out on the other side, they'll be subtly different. We'll grab these guys out and let's let's look at them in the analyzer. Now, you'll notice that the active trait, which is the one that you see, is going to be meadows. And the inactive is going to be, of course, forest. This is a little bit like uh, dominant and recessive genes that you see in uh, actual biology. And as you go through and you're breeding your bees, you're going to want to pay attention to that inactive trait. Um, there is a chance when you're breeding them that the inactive trait can come forward, which can result in a regression. And it can also cause a lot of genetic complications if you're trying to get a specific bee and you need to breed two together. So make sure you're watching these guys. And I usually try and breed out secondary traits like that so that I don't have problems moving forward. You can see just a, just a few differences here in these guys to what's active and what's passive. And if I take the meadow bee out and I throw the forest bee in, you'll see very, very similar. So we'll let these guys go. Now the apiaries are very manual, so you do have to watch them and move your bees over. You can automate the process if you want. When I am crossbreeding, like these guys here, I tend to not automate them so that I can make sure I'm keeping my genetic lines going in the direction that I want them, rather than allowing them to, I guess I would say willy-nilly <laughs> choose partners, but uh, to be at the mercy of whatever whatever drone is thrown in by the automation system. So almost always do those by hand. So and crossbreeding is mostly what you'll do to try and get genetic mutations. Now the most common thing that you can get with a forest and a meadow or if you do you can do the reverse meadow and a forest drone is a common bee. take a little while so let's give that a minute and we'll we'll come back once those have finished their lifespan all right they're just about done with the last bee there it goes and hey perfect right away you see 
What can happen? I have a common princess and a forest drone and a meadows drone. Let's look at their genetics real quick. And I pulled out a regular common drone. This is just from Creative Menu as a comparison. So you can see how genetics really come to play. So this one is actually fantastic. It's common in uh, both its recessive and its dominant traits. And pretty pretty even across the board with how it works. Normal. It's doing pretty good. And a regular one, you'll see is very not that much different. So just a, just a perfectly, uh, perfectly pristine common one right from Creative. Very similar to what we've been able to breed. And these drones crossed over like the ones before. And okay, good. This is what I want. This guy has an inactive common ancestor. Um, and we're going to want to bring that out. So this is actually the drone that will breed with the common bee that we were able to get. And that's eventually how we'll turn it into a pure common line. It will take a ton of generations. Usually, usually around 20. So let's look at the other guy. We've got some meadows and forest here. Let's see if we've got any good recessive traits. Nope, completely meadows. We do see some, some crossbreeding with the forestry with that the three fertility. What does this guy look like? Completely meadows and this forest guy. Very forest. I think we'll bring him in since he's totally forest. That way we don't breed back into the meadow side. And there we go. Let that run. And I just flipped these guys over. So this is very tedious. You spend a lot of time when you're having to manually breed bees. Babysitting apiaries. I don't like to do that. I'm a little lazy. So I usually set up something like this, which is a nice automated system. Uh, this is once again using XNet, which is my favorite way to deal with this uh, because it's all in one panel. And I've got a bunch of apiaries, or 10 of them in fact, set up here. And I've got a centrifuge, which is, if everything is filtered, uh, which is going to pull in the combs and separate the bits out. Beeswax going over here squeezer to get the honey and then I have this analyzer set up to automate analyzing the bees so all the bees that go into this database over here you can see have already been analyzed and we do have a couple of common drones and we do have this meadows princess let's grab this meadows forest hybrid Run that through. When you're breeding bees, it's best to try and do a bunch at one time. That way you have many possibilities, especially with common bees when you're starting out. There are so many different, I guess, variations that you could get with common bees. Now, if you remember when we were looking at the very second to last tab, actually, in here, It'll show you all the possible mutations that you can get from that particular bee. There is a way to fill these in without discovering them through through the apiary, through breeding. And that can also help you out if you uh, are in a pack that doesn't have JIBs or that has that particular function disabled so it doesn't show you what the different lines are and how you breed the bees. Or if you don't want to keep referring to the table if you want to do it yourself, you can pull out a table and let me grab one real quick. Here's where I embarrass myself and forget what it's called. There it is, an Esquitar. Now this allows you to take extra bees that you have. You don't want to do this with the bees that you need for breeding, but if you have extra. So if you are having to breed 
a lot of hives at once and you have all these spare drones sitting around that don't stack, is a very good use for this. That you say, okay, I put in this particular species of bee and I want to see what I can get from it. So you're playing a matching game now. Now, it's very hard to get the matching game when you don't have any guesses. So you can take other drones and you can have to spend two at a time and examine them, which will give you some hints. And sometimes you still fail. You can do that multiple times. So if I were to go in here and get, I'll just grab a stack of forest drones. That way we don't run out. And we can examine your rule and a radioactive. If I examine again, a fiendish. So I know where three are which gives me an idea of where I can find these guys. You can discover the same mutation multiple times, but what you do is you consume the paper. There you go. It's supposed to consume the paper, but apparently it is not, so yay creative menu bugs. And because there are multiple, you can do it many times. Sometimes you'll get combs, which is really useful if you need a lot of silky combs. Throw a tropical bee in here. You'll get the comb of whatever bee you're analyzing. Hooray! That'll give me a better chance to breed those bees naturally. Which is very nice. And if I were to take this Meadows Bee and uh, throw it back in the analyzer, you'll see that I have filled out some of these. And this plus tells me that I have a better chance to breed that particular option. So if you if you are in a pack that doesn't have Gendistry or doesn't have binnies, it doesn't have a way to genetically modify bees. That's going to be your best bet, is to get one of these tables and just smash bees through it. And oh hey, one of our bees has finished, and it is automatically analyzing it. And it'll just deposit them in here when it's done. I suspect, yeah, that one's still going. So you don't have to use, you don't have to use drones in here, you can use princesses. And the ones in the center are not consumed, so don't worry. There's the other one. So not a whole lot to do with genetics specifically, except that it is a tedious, time-consuming task. And Gendistry makes it a whole lot better, a whole lot easier, um, and it will significantly reduce your um, your chance of going home in a straitjacket trying to get the perfect bees. So hopefully, hopefully that little tiny peek into genetics was useful. And I hope that it makes a little more sense now than it did before. So thanks for watching, and uh, please enjoy your bee breeding.